Sup, dude. Paul George's offensive game is margarine because I can't believe it's not butter. Everything about it looks like butter, but it's not. The dude has an immaculate jump shot, dribble combos that flow like R. Kelly's pea stream, and a face that even the straightest of men can't deny is magnificent. The crazy part about that is that's not even all of it. He's also 6'8", his playmaking is solid, and his D is top tier. The dude has no weaknesses. He's not even balding. Since he's so beautiful, I mean, since his game is so beautiful, every dude wants to be just like him on the court. There's something so cool about the way he operates. He makes shit look effortless. For that reason, I wrote a 1,000 plus word script on the fella, and while I read that for the next five minutes or so, you get to sit back, enjoy, and watch baby butt smooth highlights like this. God damn, that was cold. To start off, I want to talk about his scoring, specifically his jump shot. This season, Paul has launched eight and a half threes a night, and he's knocked down a highly efficient 42% of them. The dude is one of the deadliest long range snipers in the league. Just take a look at his performance against the Thunder from a week or two ago. He showed off his sexy ass jump shot by launching 12 threes connecting on six of them, including this filthy ISO step back on Lou Dort. He didn't always have a great three ball though. Back during his rookie year, the dude got left wide open like he was Draymond. This was because his shit was broke as hell. He shot just under 30% on a little over two attempts a night. He didn't realize he was so inaccurate though. In a podcast, he said that one time during a game, Danny Granger yelled at him for taking a three, which led to him arguing, saying that he was wide open, which then prompted Danny to ask why exactly he thought he was wide open. This made him realize work needed to be done. That offseason, PG put in countless hours, and the following season, his percentage was up to nearly 40% on three and a half attempts a night. Although he was trashed from three as a rookie, his mid range was pretty solid. On 104 shots taken from 10 feet to the three point line, he made about 46% of them. Unlike his three point shot, though, his midi saw a steep drop off in accuracy the following season, and besides like one or two outlier years ever since, he's been pretty mid from there. On the other hand, the rim is a place where he's always been lethal. During his rookie year, his athleticism paired with his 6'8 frame allowed him to connect on 62% of his shots in close, many of which were sick dunks I can only dream of doing on an 8-foot rim. Fast forward to current day Paul, he's connecting on an even better 74% of shots in close. We should be calling this man Rim Job because he doesn't leave shit outside the hole. Speaking of Rim Jobs, to this day, this is one of the filthiest dunks I've ever seen. This one too, and this one, as well as this one, and lastly this one. As a white man who jumps like Michael Jordan with two broken legs, these dunks are incomprehensible. Another wildly impressive part of his game is his defense. The man has been an elite perimeter defender since his days in Indiana. Even as a rookie, he was holding his own. So much so that during the 2011 playoffs, Frank Vogel had enough trust in him to put him on MVP Derrick Rose. Paul said in the first game he felt like he played good defense on him. Then he looked at the box score and saw the dude at 39. Although he kind of got cooked in that game as well as the next, in both games three and four, Rose was held to just 38 points on 10 for 40 shooting. By the end of the series, he shot just 37% from the field and 22% from three. He did average 28 and move on to the next round in five games, but we'll ignore that. After defending the league's most valuable player as a rookie, Paul felt like there wasn't anyone on the court he couldn't guard. This mentality paved the way for him to become one of the game's most feared defenders, always being tasked with guarding the opposing team's star. It hasn't always gone his way, but he's remained confident. His deep bag has led him to many big moments, including back-to-back Eastern Conference Finals runs against the Heatles. The first one came in 2013. In that series, he and the Pacers' top-tier defense took Miami all the way to seven games. PG played well through six, averaging 21, 6, and 5 on fantastic efficiency, all while guarding LeBron. Then came Game 7, where he shit the bed, scoring a super-efficient seven points, fouled out the game, and got sent home crying. Lucky for Paul, he got another chance the following year, meeting Miami once again in the conference finals. He played great in game one, taking the 1-0 series lead, but then he dropped huge stinkers in the following two games, and just like that, they were down 2-1. In game four, Paul played better, but they lost yet again. At that point, the series was pretty much over. He put up a near 40 bomb in game five, but that did nothing, because in game six, Miami sent him home. Despite being on the losing team, those two conference finals solidified PG as a star. Because of this, he was seen as a lock to be selected to play with teams. USA over the summer. Sadly though, he wouldn't even get a chance. During training camp, they held a scrimmage, and in that scrimmage, Paul suffered one of the most gruesome injuries in sports history. As he came down from trying to block Harden's layup, he snapped his leg in half on the stanchion. This would end up sidelining him for practically the entire 2015 season, but despite the severity, he made a full recovery by 2016 and miraculously was playing at an all-star level. Although he was playing really well, Indiana looked to go in a different direction and traded him to OKC. With OKC, there was very 
very little team success, but PG was an animal. In his second year with the team, he averaged 28, 8, and 4 and led the league in steals with 2.2. But like I said, there wasn't much team success. Before he played his very first playoff series with OKC, Paul gave himself the nickname Playoff P. This was a terrible mistake that would end up haunting him to this day. It was a mistake because he played awful and they lost the series. And then the next year, Dame hit this shot on him, which led to the entire NBA community giving him shit for years. It didn't help he sucked in the 2020 playoffs too. If he can forget the bad memories from past playoffs, he has a real chance this year to flip the narrative. He's playing extremely well and is on a stacked team with Kawhi, Harden, and Westbrook who are all playing fantastic. While it won't be easy for that team to win it all, they have a pretty good shot, as long as their defense is on point. Speaking of defense, I believe Bill Russell is the greatest defender in NBA history. Here's a video I made about the dude. You can click here to watch it. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. Bye, dude.